For as long as I can remember, my father has been irrationally afraid of mimes. I've seen him get reduced to a sweating, quivering mess at the mere sight of them. I've mentioned this before, I'll get it out of the way. The one thing I want to see in my life is a mime throw up. I think it'd be funny. You've never mentioned that before. I feel like I've mentioned that. I just want to see someone in the street who maybe caught a performance of a mime somewhere, and maybe the mime had food poisoning of some kind, yeah. and just in the middle of the act, the mime goes from like, <laughs> you know, and just the, the and it plays into loud. It. It plays into it. I turned around, about to say something, probably to inquire why this woman was on a deserted road in the middle of the night, when her hand suddenly shot out towards me. My eyes darted toward the hand. Alarm bells were ringing in my head as I prepared myself for a physical assault, but all movement stopped once the hand had fully been extended. I registered that she was holding something between her thumb and forefinger. It was a piece of paper. She held it midair, offering it silently for me to take. I stared, my eyes narrowing in confusion and mild suspicion before I reached out and hesitantly accepted it. In the distance, I heard the faint rumbling of thunder. It was about to rain soon. Cautiously, I examined the piece of paper. In the darkness of the car, I couldn't inspect it as thoroughly as I wanted to, but from what little I could see on the piece of the paper, scribbled out in a messy scrawl was an unfamiliar address. Out of muscle memory, I entered the address into my phone's GPS and found that it was less than a half hour's drive away. I think this man is being entirely too polite um, because if I'm this driver and this spooky mm. lady gets in my car, I'd shine my probably cell phone light in her face and be like, sorry, can't see you back there. You're looking awfully spooky. How's it going tonight? Do you mind <laughs> speaking up a little? I can't hear you. I mean, white nightgown to me means either this person's in some serious trouble or going to cause some serious trouble. Yeah. What if you out creep them? I mean, I'd like to see what you mean. You just sort of turn around and wink and go, sorry if it gets a little smelly in here. Oh, and then you just shit your pants. Yeah. In fact, you might not even have to out creep them. You might, just shitting your pants here might save yeah. your life. <laughs> they problem. hand you the address and you just go. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have to shampoo your car after that. But. Yeah, but I mean. But you'll be alive to shampoo your car. I set the glass down on the countertop, turned away, and thumped my chest until the coughing stopped. When I turned back, the cup of water was gone. I froze, my eyes darting back and forth around the kitchen. There was a shift in the air, a subtle drift, as though a wind had just blown through the room. I stepped back from the countertop, and my heel bumped into something. I spun around. It was the glass of water tumbling over with a clattering thud, empty. Confused, I squatted down, picked it up and studied it, turned it over in my hand like it was some strange alien artifact. What just happened? Very possible in a coughing fit, this person just flailed their, I'm, look, I'm an, I own some long limbs. Yeah. I'm a flailer. I see it, dude. So I could see myself in a coughing fit just, knocking some glassware off of a table. Yeah. But I certainly wouldn't then go, oh? Yeah, I imagine this is what you think most is of my a, life is like. Is this a tesseract? Thinking, thinking that there's a ghost in my kitchen. This is not my morning routine. No, you don't wake up and you're not immediately terrified of the world. No, well, I mean, I, I am that, but yeah. you know, that's, that's a person, <laughs> that's a person. After 2020, I think we all are. <laughs> <laughs> all I accomplished was getting pissed drunk by 11 a.m literally piss drunk. I couldn't stumble to the bathroom in time, so I ended up relieving myself in a collection of dying succulents and cacti that decorate my living room. The voice stayed quiet while I was on my bender, but it was a fragile silence. I got the impression it was waiting for its turn to speak. I relished the quiet. The hangover I was barreling toward would be worth the Pedro-free moments. Have you ever not been able to make it to the bathroom in time? I did pee on a wall once. You write your name in it? No, I, I was on an L in Chicago and I uh, I was out with some friends and <laughs> it was a long ride and I got off and I started peeing on a wall and then lights went on behind me and it was a policeman. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, and I ran around the corner. Did you put Mr. Wee Wee back in the pants before you did that or was he out? He was on his way. So when you turned around to face the police officers- I don't know what they saw. 
The buzzing was echoing in my skull. It felt like it was getting louder, drowning my thoughts in their oppressive drone. Suddenly, all the flies lifted off me in a single writhing black mass. I cracked open a single eye, seeing Elsie's tail as it disappeared out the window, followed by the thick cloud of flies. It would be sick if the flies formed like a shape, like in cartoons, like a right. big sledgehammer. Or like a big- smashed them. Or like a big middle finger as it falls yeah, comes out yeah, of the window. Yeah, that'd be yeah. good too. <laughs> but flies. Flies, yeah, yeah. yeah. I laid down on my floor for a while longer, shaking and crying, before I stood and dragged myself to the front door. I pulled on my jacket on the way out. I thought about yelling for her, but I decided against it. The last thing I needed was the man with the rabbits to hear me somehow. I just hoped that Elsie didn't hurt any more rabbits. I hoped that she didn't hurt anything else. What? Wait a second. You just got attacked by a gaggle of hive flies, and yeah. your thought after that happens is like, I really hope she doesn't hurt any more rabbits. The flies in my apartment have gone full Borg, but <laughs> I hope the rabbits are okay. <laughs> I know, what the fuck? I don't care about the rabbits. <laughs> I don't give a point. shit about the rabbits. My entire body was shaking, and my heart was pounding inside of my chest, slamming against my rib cage so hard, I thought it was going to break free. I ran from the theater to the lobby. Justin was still at his post, and he tried to say something to me, but my feet carried me so quickly I was already out the door before he could finish. I ran all the way to my car and sped home. I locked all the doors behind me once I got inside, and only then, in the safety of my home, I could finally let myself breathe. They just went right to theater to home, so he's like freaking out that entire drive, just, just getting in the car, just... Yeah. You're checking the mirrors? Right. Yep, that's what people do when they drive. Yeah. Putting it in reverse. Yep, putting it in reverse, then putting it back into drive when they're done reversing. Stopping in AM, PM, filling up gas. Yep. Back in the car. Yep. Seatbelt. Mirror. <laughs> Check those mirrors again. <laughs> get it. Still freaked out. That was a fucked up movie. It hadn't been easy to set it up. To drill so deep required a precision that had exhausted some of the sharpest minds in the world. But work had progressed nicely, albeit a little slowly. The platform was secure, and the derrick, the hulking metal support structure, had lowered the drill pipe into the water. A slow and laborious descent later, the drill sank its metal teeth into the ocean floor and began chewing its way over to the reservoir as we pumped lubricants down the drill pipe to keep things churning. Contrary, this is the opposite of what Bruce Willis says in Armageddon. This guy knows a lot about drilling. Yeah. Drill, rig, Derek. You know what a Derek is? Yeah, it's a guy. That's pretty good. Thanks. I like that. Yeah. Cheers to that one, brother. Oh that's yeah, good. of course, that's absolutely. That's cheers. the first cheers of the season. Smooth sailing, as smooth as can be expected for work like this. And then things went wrong. Terribly, horribly wrong. They dug into a devil. What if they just like accidentally killed the devil? Like he was taking a bath. Yeah. And out of nowhere, just a <laughs> he's just spinning around in his bathtub because the drill is just spinning his little devil body. <laughs> All the people in hell are like, yes! <laughs> now we can get a nacho bar! It just popped up at the bottom corner of the mirror, a white face with a wide, thin-lipped mouth and large black eyes. It had very clean, neat teeth. It didn't appear to have a nose or any hair, but perhaps it was just because of the quality of the image. It was grinning broadly, and its eyes were wide open. But what scared me most about the face was the fact that it was there. It was actually there. I never truly actually believed in the paranormal until then, but now I'm open-minded. Sounds like some baloney, a funny little moon man. No nose? No nose, yeah. How's that happen? I don't know, man. I mean, I also would say that if you were to see that in real life, definitely some poop coming out. I'd give a at trouble. At the very least, a nugget. God, it's, is it weird that I would love to get scared so bad that I shit my pants? Yes. Just imagine the experience of so much fear running through your body that it loosens your bowels and poop just slides out of you. Would that take you out of it and sort of make things better? If there's a wall man who comes out yeah. of the mirror and is like, Ryan Bergara, <laughs> and he's got his big eyes, his rictus grin, yeah. uh, and you go, oh, leave me, oh, oh, and then you poop yourself, are you going, <laughs> wall man, 
you are not going to believe this. <laughs> and Wallman's like, what? And you're like, don't you smell it, dude? And he's like, no, I don't have a nose. I used to really like it when my parents would have the TV on late at night. I always felt like there was something watching me in my bedroom when I was sleeping when I was a child. I had one very specific um, memory. I think I was like seven or eight or something. And I heard a noise in my room and from the foot of my bed, as clear as a bell, I just heard like a laugh. Like a, <laughs> you know, like, um, what like the a cartoonish, fuck? like a cartoonish laugh. And um, I remember being like, Jesus Christ, you know? Um, and I think I got my parents, I woke up and I was like, I'm pretty sure I heard a laugh in my room. I don't know why. <laughs> But when I picture six to eight year old Shane, I picture you yeah. walking into your parents' room and saying it just like that. Like, hey guys, um, I'm pretty sure there's a laugh in my room. I don't know what to think of it. <laughs> when yeah. any normal six to eight year old would scream immediately, probably start crying. I couldn't explain it. I was like, I don't know what's going on there. I assume it was a nightmare. Or maybe from that moment on you were marked and maybe that's why nothing seems to affect you now. I don't know. When something happens you can't explain, something no one would believe or understand, there's nothing you can do except force yourself to forget. I try not to think about it, but sometimes I still do. My wife Alyssa loves watching movies and so do I. It was part of the reason we connected. A lot of our dates happened at the movies. Eventually, our daughter Rachel, who's now 12, grew to love them too. It became a tradition in our family that at least every two weeks we'd go out and see a movie together. There was a small local theater just a bit away that gave family discounts, and tickets were half off for anyone under the age of 13. So, it wasn't an expensive outing. It was last April when I stopped loving the movie theater experience. I haven't been back to one since. What could cause you to never go back to the movies? <coughs> Worms in your popcorn? I'd still go. I'd just be like, huh, bad batch. Well, no, I'm saying like, what if it's a bucket of popcorn? It's all worms. Still just bad, bad, batch. bad, batch. bad batch. You'd take it to the counter and be like, bad batch here, it's worms. Hey, can I get a hot one? Yeah. <laughs> Top me off. It would take the movie coming out of the screen and attacking me. Like if Michael well, Myers jumped I'm out of the screen. Well, I'm going every week. Well, Who knows what's gonna happen? It depends what kind of movie you're in. Demi Moore steps off the screen? Okay, keep it in your pants, weirdo. What, are you gonna smooch me? <laughs> you know? Are you hearing that voice? I yelled over my shoulder as the sun set behind the trees, but Devin was gone. If he'd fallen, he would have yelled. Same if he needed a break or thought he saw something. How long had I been sprinting alone? Sounds like Devin needs to work on his cardio. Uh, I, could out, I could outrun you in the woods, so I wouldn't have to worry about that. Mm, you got little legs. Yeah, but they you go pretty fast. They go legs. they go pretty fast. <laughs> Not fast enough. And your long legs lumber. Go you're more like a, you're more like a lumberer. Yeah, you're a little tiny baby. And I feel like I could I could, you're a little baby. I got, got, baby I got more cardio. You got baby than legs. You. I think I got more cardio. I bound than you. like the BFG. Oh, I want to show you something. Oh God. You're gonna appreciate this. Am I? I'm not sure. You just do you remember that. <laughs> Fucking god damn it, dude. Son of a bitch. Oh, I'm glad you pulled it up. <laughs> I man. found the lustful. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you had that. Um. Working in the background. I mean, yowza. It's pretty weird that I could see you zooming in. <laughs> <laughs> That's my smile, dog. Don't don't zoom in on a cartoon <laughs> and go, yowza. <laughs> Whoa, look at that spread. <laughs> it's fucking weird, man. I just wanted to jog your memory. So thank you. Consider it jogged. <laughs> Consider it. My memory just yeah, ran a marathon. It's ran. It's ran. It's, it's fucking exhausted. Later that month, Terrence contacted me with the news that his wife had killed herself. I'm sorry, that's not funny. I just saw a cartoon two seconds ago, and I had to read that sentence. There's so many levels of unfair to it's that. It's really photorealistic. <laughs> it really is. Now it's becoming your smile, dog. <laughs> I'm just going to get through the sentence, and we're going to move on. Go on. <clears throat> Later that month, Terrence contacted me with the news that his wife had killed herself. Terrence was in shambles. He wept, God damn it, son <laughs> of a fucking, it's the worst time for you to fucking show me that. It's like, I can't think of a worse time in this story for you to show me that. Uh. Could you imagine if like, there was like some actor about to do like a dramatic monologue and right before the director was like, hey, come over here, come over here. Check out this huh? How photorealistic is that? Anyways, it's Claire, very photorealistic. Garrett, 
God. You know what? I'm going to request that everyone just take a peek at it. Oh, just, no. I can't be the only one who share, sees this. It's oily. And the pose he's in is so weird. Okay. Continue. Terrence was in shambles. You got it. <laughs> you can't be laughing over there and saying you got it. <laughs> it's a great parallel. It, no, it's not. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my mind. Maybe you're right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Just give me a fucking yeah. second. Okay. I just feel I would feel really comfortable if someone if just someone else could look at it. We can't ask anyone here to look at that. <laughs> because now that is our smile dog and they will not be able to I would really love for someone else to look at it. No. Okay. Nothing was missing. No signs of a struggle or a break-in. His glasses were sitting on his nightstand. His phone was still there, still plugged into its charger. His clothes for the day were laid out. All his shoes were still on the shoe rack. His keys were on the key hook by the door. Even the kitchen knife was still in its knife block. But my boyfriend was gone. I called up my friend who I was staying with and we went to the police station to report him as missing. They were pretty unhelpful, pretty dismissive, but I mostly just wanted to cover all my bases. We spread it around Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and every other social media site anybody in our friend group or our families had an account on. His family hired a private investigator to try and find him. I did everything I could to help, including eventually talking about his sleepwalking. I have an idea of how this could end and it's probably not gonna go this way, but I think it's a good ending and I wanna pitch it. Hit me. He gets there, can't find his boyfriend. Oh no, where is he? I can't find him. Oh yeah, no, yeah. he's gone. Where is he? Yeah. Looking everywhere, turning the apartment inside out, yeah. emptying all the he's drawers. Looking uh, we're looking in the closet, um, okay, looking in the shed. He's really thoroughly um, looking for him, yes. He sits down in a big comfy chair and he's sitting there going, where oh, where could he be? He looks over, he catches, uh, oh, maybe a reflection, uh, a glimmer of sunlight dances across the mantle and he sees a snow globe and he thinks, I don't remember that being there. He walks up to the snow globe, he sees a little tiny version of his boyfriend. He looks scared as if saying, help me. The end? Question mark. Does anybody else have any other pitches for the ending of the story? Let's just stay with the end then, huh? Okay, cool. Okay, well, that's good though. Yeah. Or maybe he he's a, a Lego. Globe the whole time. He was always What if he's a Lego? Lego? Wow. Is that better? What if he was a Lego? That's crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, what if he was a Lego? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mom hired a teacher who came to our house every weekday. His name was Dr. Fleece. I liked him. He would always look at me in the eye when he listened to my stories. He liked to hear about the red man most. One afternoon after my class with Dr. Fleece, mom called and told me I was going to stay over at my cousin's place. My cousin's name was Ida. She was two years older than me. She was the only person I considered my friend. I quickly packed my things and mom drove me to her house. Ida's bed faced the window just like mine. I'd like, before we get too deep into this little slumber party, I'd like to point out it's weird that Dr. Fleece likes to hear the stories about the Red Man. I'm just going to put that out there. It's weird. Oh, the Red Man again. Oh, I always love hearing about him. Caramelized, you say? Protruding eyes, huh? Tell me more about his peepers. <laughs> I might be turning the corner here on Dr. Fleece. I got, yeah, I'll say it. Dr. Fleece, I like him. I, I, if this is a true story at the end, the first thing I'm doing is looking up Dr. Fleece and where he practices. How do Pelotons work? It's like a, it's like yeah, a- Yeah, you clip into it, you bike. There's like usually like a live class. There's an instructor, they talk to the class, they motivate you. It makes you feel like you're in a community or like the gym experience from home. I think I'm learning something about myself here that I don't like communities. Because this person is like, Soul Cycle, I loved connecting with people. I loved doing a thing together as a unit, as a group, to cheer each other on. I'm gonna prove you wrong right now in one sentence. Here we go. Yeah. You know what, not even one sentence. Nay, two words, the cinema. That's, no. What? No, no, no. How is that different? 
There How is, is that different? There is zero connection there. What are you talking about? There's literally a room full of people silently participating in the silently, same thing. Silently. Yeah. Silently. Silently is even better. But I have been to some exercise classes for some bullshit BuzzFeed yeah, thing we did not, back in the day. you're not talking to each no, other no, on SoulCycle. No, but what they do is they go, come on, Shane. Yeah. You got this, Shane. Yeah, that's because you suck at I'm cycle. seeing that hustle there, so, Ryan. So what you don't like is that you suck at soul cycle. And I you don't, don't like, like being called I out in front of a group. I don't like people to acknowledge me as a human being. Unlike you, who uh, I guess hates people, I do enjoy people. I like people. I just don't like... You just hate people. I just don't like people. Publisher's note. This was an actual thread from 2010 on 2chan, a Japanese image board. The thread was translated and compiled for easier reading by VG Person. It began in the middle of a thread called Post About Strange Occurrences Around You, Thread 26. For your convenience, the responses from the original thread creator have been labeled Hasumi, but please note that the poster originally started as anonymous before revealing their name later in the thread. Conversely, Anon indicates a post made by any other 2chan user. They are not all the same person. By all indications, the responses in the thread were happening in real time as the user described their situation. Please enjoy the thread. I love a story that starts out with, this is definitely real. I well, swear. they never claimed it was real. They claimed it was an actual thread. Okay. Maybe think critically for once. Excuse me? <laughs> Try and think critically. The stupid scotch tape is sticking to my hand again. I've hung so many flyers, I've lost count. But for every single one, I've had to pick the dumb tape from my fingers. Pick away tape, stick it to the flyer, hang the flyer. Boy missing, any information greatly appreciated. And his picture, it was actually a picture of both of us, brother and sister, smiling after one of his baseball games last year. But I cut my half out. I'm not missing, he is. Is it weird that I kind of wish it was me? Finney's got trouble standing up for himself. If I were the one who'd been taken, well, let's say the grabber would have had a serious fight on his hands. We're already talking about the grabber, huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tell me more about this grabber. I do love that the story starts with the narrator being like, I could take the grabber one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I could, I could totally take I think this that's guy. a misjudgment though cuz the grabber the thing that the grabber does is he grabs. That's true. How did you figure that one out? That's sort of his whole thing from from what I gather. Yeah, I guess so. I got mad respect for the grabber and not in not because now, That's no, a weird me, no, place no, to no. start from, but let's see how you work your way up. I want to clarify. Not I'd love for you to. Not because he abducts children. Great. That's a great place to but start. Because I respect people who do one thing and do it well. Oh, like in and out. Like in and out. I followed, letting my eyes wander over the rusted swing and the overgrown bushes that choked the yard. Aunt Sarah, I heard the girl ask, it's me, Olivia. I turned my neck and saw the old woman's face tighten with a frown. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a fan. To be fair, that's how I answer the phone when anybody calls or anybody in my family answers the phone that way. Well, you're very mean to your brother. He's mean to me too. Yeah. It's a form of uh, uh, affection in our Love. family. Yeah. yeah. Just to paint the picture here, can you give me your tightest frown? Oh. Yeah, if I saw that coming from a lady. It doesn't look very tight though. though. Let me turn around, maybe oh. that'll help. Say, say, hey, can I have something? Say some dipshit request. Pass the Doritos. Where's the frown? There we go, that's good. I like that. It's getting looser. Tighten it, tighten it. It felt like I had only been asleep for a few minutes when I was jolted awake to the sound of loud and frantic knocking on the car door. Disoriented, I blearily looked around to see who had woken me up. It was dark and it took a while for my eyes to acclimate to my surroundings. But finally, as I turned toward the rear passenger door, I could make out a shadowy figure. In that moment, I couldn't tell you why I did what I did. Maybe it was a cab driver's impulse. Maybe it was because I had just woken up and my sleep muddled brain couldn't catch up in time. Or maybe it was just because I had never been the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> Good self burn right there. Yeah. No ego to this person. You're asleep in your car. 
on the side of the road. Somebody knocks on your door, even if, and let's say you're Shane Madej, the cabbie. Oh, wow. You opening the door? Wait, hang on, let me get, you... sh shut up, let me get into the role here. Oh my God, okay, well there's Ooh. a nicer way to say that. Ooh. I got the beads behind me, you know, I got the beads back here. What do you got hanging on your mirror? I got a rosary, I'm deeply religious. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one Any of the, kind of air freshener of I some sort. I got one of the ladies, you know. I think we've set the stage here enough. You're a yeah. cab driver. What a long day of driving. These folks don't got no respect for a guy like me. And then you hear, Hey, who's that? And you look up, and you just see a shadowy figure. A shadowy figure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say huh? that out loud. You letting them in? Yeah, come on in, pal. Well, you need a ride to. Here is what I would do. I would not let them in. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers did something they said they would not do. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the captives they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced, we are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. To their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice respond. We no longer want to be freed. Oh, gotta ask, why are these people surprised at what they have wrought? You're locking people up for two weeks mm. with no sleep. What did they think was gonna happen? They're like, oh boy, it looks like we really done something. We, we done a flooper. I guess you would wanna see like what would happen when they die, when their bodies start to adapt and Maybe they don't need sleep. Maybe they're trying to create like a super soldier of some sort. I just imagine them just kicking things off and being like, this is going to be pretty fucked up. <laughs> and then two weeks later being like, well, I guess it is pretty fucked yeah, up. Yeah, like it started in a bar. They're like, I wonder what would happen. Hey, you know what would be extremely fucked? If we just made a bunch of dudes stay awake for a long time. Oh shit, dude, you're a fucking madman. I told him if he kept bringing up fun, we'd see how fun it was being a guy who had zero sexual service anymore. What? Sexual service? That's right. This is a couple. Oh, I see. You like a hike? It depends. Like a real hike? Yeah, but like Runyon Canyon when you just Ooh. see people taking Instagram pictures and like walking their dog yeah, and stuff LA like hikes that. suck. Not great. They're Not no all good. of them. There they're are some bad. Good, there's some good ones. No, they're all bad. They're dusty. They're dry. There's dog turds everywhere. There's people blasting, you know, uh, they got the little USB speakers. Oh, yeah, the Bluetooths. Yeah, yeah. I, I see you guys walking around with those. I mean, I appreciate Bruno Mars. I don't want to hear him when I'm out in the wilderness. No. I want to hear little birds and crows. Well, I'm on a hike. I don't really like music. I like listening to God's Ox. All right, well, we're off to a good start. Yeah, great. Help is on the way. Focus on breathing. Breathe in. I breathed in. Breathe out. I breathed out. Breathe in. I'm not here for the breathing exercises. <laughs> yeah. The person on the phone I'm is like, like, I'm gonna play some rain sounds Yeah, now. this is not a Lamaze class, lady. I'm about to get fucking ax murdered in my house. The dispatcher would definitely say like, get out of the house, yeah, not dude. <laughs> hide in a closet yeah, it's... like Lori Strode. Yeah. Hope he doesn't find you. Get to the highest floor you can, preferably the one with no way out. <laughs> this may be actually what I would be like as a dispatcher because when the pressure's on, I don't think I'm good at advising people. Um, uh, uh, hide in a, a bathroom. The person next to me is like, did you tell them to get in a bathroom? Yeah, should I have told them to leave? Then you hear on the other line, oh, you're fucking dead now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just like, Ooh, well, lost another one. Next. Uh, <laughs> what would you be like as a dispatcher, bro? I don't think I can handle it. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> You're trying to hang up the ah. It's a train from Shin Hamamatsu. What do you see? You still there? Looks like we're finally stopping at a station. You aren't going to get off there, are you? At this point, it's clear at the very least, in best case scenario, you have gotten on the wrong train. Yeah. I'm not immediately like, I'm on a terror train right now. A hell train. Yeah. That too, you could do that. Hell train, terror train. Mine's got alliteration going for it. A spooky choo-choo. A spooky choo-choo. A boo-choo. A boo-choo. I like that. I like spooky choo-choo. You shake on that, boo-choo. Spooky choo-choo. I'll tell you what. 
My first go-to here would be to wake everybody up on the train. You're gonna be like, I got on the wrong train! I got on the wrong- No, I'd be very polite about it. Pretend to be asleep, okay? I'd do the gentle, excuse me, sir? <laughs> sir? Mm. Mm. Uh, hello, I'm riding this train with you. I don't know where we are. Where are we going? Answer me! It's a white it's man. Like, just like that. <laughs> it's a white it's man. It's a white man. Years of tweaking bacterial DNA, failure after failure, until we learned the bug could only survive in the blood of the young. Under 25 seems to be the sweet spot. Cough, cough. Every muscle in my body was spasming. The iron taste of blood began to fill my mouth. Something was very wrong, but still, Eric seemed unbothered. They developed the antibiotic years ago, but the pathog pathogen itself took a bit longer. I don't even know what that means. What's a pathogen? Like the virus. The virus? Yeah. If the virus is having such a hard time surviving, then just let it die. I think I got a hunch here. Oh, if they distribute the virus, then they can make money by selling. Oh. Oh. And, and the bug could only survive in the blood of the young, is yes. what he said. Yes. Until we learned the bug could only survive in the blood of the young, under 25 seems to be the sweet spot social media consultant. I've heard of going viral, but. <laughs> Oh, oh, shit. Oh. I dropped my spatula. Could you repeat that, I asked, pulling my bathrobe tight against a sudden chill. About your breakfast or the other part? The other part. The voice confirmed that it was the devil and reiterated its plans for my eyes. It also told me its name was Pedro. Deviling was its occupation. It had been whispering to me for years and was surprised I finally heard it. It thought I should get the lump on my temple checked out. Wait, I got a question. Pedro the Devil as says, I'm gonna eat your eyeballs or your ball balls. Which ones are you giving up? I think the testes gotta go. Yeah, me too. Yeah, testicle Tuesday no more. What is testicle Tuesday? What did you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a self-care day where Okay, I... <laughs> yeah, that's why you always block off Tuesday That's on true, your it's gotta be to polish the boys, you know what I mean? Get those babies pristine. Her car was found empty and idling at a stop sign three blocks from her house. In both cases, their phones, their wallets, and all their possessions were accounted for. Only their bodies were gone. That next morning, the mug and slice was full of out-of-towners, news crews, journalists, even a few groups who somehow all made a living investigating unsolved crimes. Is that YouTube? <laughs> Nasty. Was this written for us? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> hey, we do what we do, and we do it well. And you know when something kind of like ekes its way into other stories and other media, just means you've left an imprint yeah. on society. Yes, if this happened, we would be there. When something goes bump in the night. Oh yeah. The ghoul boys will be there. When little Jackie goes missing from the local mug and slice, the ghoul boys will be there. Indeed, we will. Oh, I thought you were going to top it off with a third one. Oh, I thought when, you looked like you were in a roll. I didn't want to interrupt when, you. When a super senior goes missing from a movie theater, but not his wallet, then I guess we'll also be there for that. I heard a woman's voice whisper, not again. The words made me spin. I looked back at the guys who were all staring at me in return. Looking at their eyes, I saw Jason and Devin were confused, but Cooper looked terrified. I turned back to the tree and let out another, hello? Nothing. See, this is when they all need to team up, get their knives out. Everyone should have honestly brought two pocket knives. Cause I'm thinking if you have one pocket knife, you know, you're like, hey, stay away from me. If you got two pocket knives, you just go like this towards the lady. Yeah. Just... All, all four or five of you charging at her going like this. Yeah. Or you could do circles. I guess the, the woman has not threatened them in any way. It could be someone who's scared of them. I disagree. I mean, her only crime is being emaciated and creepy and smelling like campfire. She's she's crawling through the forest and hiding behind trees while she stares at them. That's true. I feel true. like hike hike law. Yeah. Uh, that's against probably common decency out there in the woods. And you do that, you're likely to get cut. I don't celebrate birthdays anymore. When you get older, you try to forget they even exist. You really don't need a reminder telling you you're slowly becoming an outdated dinosaur. 
and I've always found commemorating the harrowing approach of death a rather morbid notion. So, I suppose having my birthday in the middle of a nationwide lockdown was somewhat of a godsend. Jesus Christ, this person needs to be nicer to themselves. I mean, did you have uh, mixed emotions about turning 30? Yeah, when I turned 30, you know, I went off a little bit into the deep end. You're not like, I refuse to acknowledge my birthday anymore. No, I'm just gonna turn 29 the rest of my life. Oh, <laughs> you're devilish. You are bad. <laughs> I you am, are bad. I am bad, I am bad. <laughs> I remember when I turned 30, I was like, kick ass, dude. <laughs> then when I turned 39, I was like, what's 40? Then yeah. when I turned 65, I was like, all right, now I'm feeling it. Yeah, you feeling know? what? <laughs> the energy? Yeah, the exactly right. And now I'm rocking it into the grave. Yeah, I think that's just death knocking on your door. Yeah, come on, buddy. Let's tango. Oh, shit. You might be the first person to, to, to beat Father Time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat his ass so hard he'll be crying to Holy death. shit, what are you gonna do it with? <laughs> um, a sock full of oranges. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there open-mouthed to see the thick layer of dust that coated nearly everything. And the longer I looked around, the worse it got. There was a half-eaten plate of food turned to mold sitting on the table. Both sinks in the kitchen were similarly moldy, and the air in the trailer stank, even beyond what I'd expect for some moldy dishes. Not what you want to see in the, in the place that you're planning to move into. No. But, you know, I was a little distracted during this because, I, you know, you're talking about this creepy environment. Uh, but I was just really curious to know what the half-eaten food was. You said, ha they said half-eaten food. Yeah, yeah. Is it nachos? It was a rotisserie chicken or a, a candy apple? For him to point out half-eaten, yeah. I would assume it's something that's delicious because you'd be like, how could you only eat half of that slice of za? Yeah. Za being pizza. You know, when I used to work in a movie theater, uh, sometimes people would leave half-eaten buckets of popcorn in their seats after the movie was done. And it was my job to go in and clean them up. Sometimes I'd just eat them. <laughs> it was free. It's fucking gross. That's so gross, dude. I don't care. Uh, it was pretty gross. I, I, I lost uh, my train of thought because I can't that's good. Think, I can't stop. I, had, I actually had to duck into a corner of the theater where the security cameras couldn't see me because I. But because now, but not only was it free, but I was getting paid to eat it. Gold mine, I guess, for someone like you. <laughs> it really was. And the general tone of their conversations took on a darker aspect after the four-day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were, and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones and one-way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other subjects in captivity with them. If we're trapped in a chamber with each other for five days, we're already speaking nonsense right now. We're somewhat well rested. Yeah. I wonder what we would talk about if we were really out of it for five days. Movies. Everybody else would be like, you know, pulling their hair out and whispering to the walls and we'd be like, I thought the third act attendant was a little weak. <laughs> There'd be, you know, blood all over the walls and we'd be like, hey, those guys went kind of crazy anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, you guys do direct deposit? <laughs> but the laughter had not completely ceased. One person was still laughing loudly. Confusion turned to abject horror as the bizarre truth revealed itself. It was me laughing, sitting covered in blood with my head tilted back and the deep cut in my throat wide open. I laughed loud and strong. I never knew how funny family dynamics could be. I pulled Timmy's steak knife out of my hand, dropped it on the floor. Camila screamed as Lucy hid behind Ben. What they thought to be a corpse now stared at them all. Where are we going here? Where are we going here? I'm having fun. What's happening Holy here? shit! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Let's fucking go, dude! Timmy began to pee himself and cry. Poor kid. It would be over soon. <laughs> I never thought that I would be, like, rooting for a boy to pee himself. <laughs> I'm like, I'm over here in the stands being like, yeah, piss yourself, you little piece of shit. How are you feeling? There's piss all over the rug, you know. I felt a gentle but horrifying pressure on the back of both of my eyes, as if teeth were resting on the orbs. The enamel hesitated, 
never breaking the surface, but perched on the cusp of snapping and grinding and chewing. I whimpered. That's disgusting. Could you just imagine right now a light pressure being applied to your eyeballs? I don't like it. You and your like mom it. ever do that thing where she like pushes her eyeball in and out like that? Like, eh. No, my mom never did that. <laughs> my mom used to do that to me all the time. But can I, I won't touch my actual eye, but it's sort of like. Oh yeah, I could see. <laughs> I could see, wait, hold on, I could do that. That is freaky, man. <laughs> oh. Hey, shitty boy. I'm give my mom a call tomorrow, ask her why she never did that uh, to me growing up. It sounds funny. But the pressure you feel by doing that, go ahead and do it at it's home. not pleasant. Viewers, is uh, imagine that at the back of your eyeball. Yeah. And it, uh, feeling like teeth. The young lion that happened to be in our area at the same time made him especially excited. He decided he wanted to try and get pictures of the lion and emailed the National Geographic team for advice. They recommended setting up an automatic camera that takes shots every couple of seconds in an area the lion was known to visit. They also recommended setting some kind of bait so the lion was more likely to come by. No one in the creek liked the idea of live bait or carrion, so we came up with a different kind of bait. Glad they're showing restraint here by saying, hey, maybe live bait's not a good idea when it comes yeah. to taking photos of a lion. Yeah. Granted, if you were out there, Shane, I'd be more than happy to throw you out there because I feel like if any lion came towards you, all you would have to do is crane upward and really extend out all of your limbs and the lion would flee in terror. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd freak him out, yeah. That's fair. If you made yourself really big? Yeah, I don't like it. Like if I came at you like that? <laughs> That's not good, no, I don't like it. Are there bears around here? His question was for Jason, who apparently grew up not too far from Hackett Woods and was serving as our de facto trail master. Um, I think so, maybe? Not the most confident of answers, but that's never stopped any crypto bro I've ever met. <laughs> I love all the crypto digs here. She really doesn't like crypto. <laughs> this, I gotta say, having, now you've seen some horror films and I have too. I have, yes. We've seen them. Sounds like all these people are gonna die. This sounds like the classic sort of, hey, here's the gang. This has the cadence of classic pre-murder banter. We get an idea of who the people are. One of them likes crypto, one of them hates bears. Me too. Yeah. Uh, one of them's the, the girlfriend that's kind of stuck in the situation. Yeah. There probably is a burnout in here somewhere. Oh, big I, time. You know? and all of them are gonna die a horrible death and a killer's gonna wear their spine as a belt. Yeah. Cooper sounds like a name that would die first. Yeah, cause I, I can imagine someone going, Oh, Cooper! <laughs> yeah. I'm no weather woman, but for my money, Washington has to be the rainiest state in America. And Kildeer, population just shy of 10,000 at last count, has to be the rainiest town in Washington. But I've never lived anywhere else and never wanted to. As I like to say, Rain and Killdeer go together like pie and coffee. Yeah, I've been up there. I'll tell you, it's a pretty rainy place. It rained when I was there. So confirmed. And, confirmed um, it rained that one time Shane was there. Well, Chicago, we've got thunderstorms, but certainly not the rainiest because you get a lot of beautiful sunny days too, and snow. Uh, a rich palette in the Midwest. I, did, I don't know why, but all of that gesticulation with the smugness of it, I kind of wanted to choke you. Mm. <laughs> I'd love to see you try. Well, you think you're a big tough guy because you're dressed like a, like a hipster Riddler? <laughs> Most other 24 year olds don't care much about insurance, but I have a persistent cough, something the men in my family have always had, kind of like asthma, but with a deep, hollow cough. Usually it's manageable. But when my grandfather was found dead in his apartment when I was three, doctors pointed to the cough. Is it normal to have a persistent cough? Because I always thought that was just a thing in movies to communicate that a character was going to die soon. Yeah, usually he'll cough into like a little tissue, blood will be on it, he'll hide it from the family at the dinner table, Papa's fine kind of thing, yeah. tuberculosis. Tizzle bizzle. I just don't ever want to be found dead. I want everyone to see Yeah, that's completely contradictory to things you've said in the past. You have said that you wanted to be found dead in a field. No, 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 I don't care what they do with my body when I'm dead, but I think it'd be nice for a lot of people to witness yeah. my demise. But if I was at home, let's say I'm an old man, and okay. I'm like, I could feel it, I'm about to die. Oh. What I would do instead of like write a message to my loved ones or something, I would try to put myself in the funniest pose I possibly could think of sure. so that when people found me, I'm like a... What, what are you doing? Yeah. What if I was like this? And like they found me in rigor mortis like... <laughs> That's or, pretty good. Or just like... Yeah. 
That's a nice gift. Exactly, because it's going to be horrifying to find Grandpa dead, but if he's like... Yeah, with sunglasses on, like back. Weekend at Bernie's yeah. or something. Has a beer in his hand or something like that, just <laughs> like this. Or one of those beer helmets on. I mean, it'd be cool to go out on your own terms. I think so, there you go. Yeah, Thelma and Louise. You and me, driving over a cliff. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given. I must remain awake. The remaining two subjects' restraints were reinforced, and they were placed back into the chamber, awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers, facing the wrath of their military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of their project, considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer, a former KGB agent, instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. I just drop them off at a mall or something. Yeah, that's kind of how you start the zombie apocalypse, though. So I don't know if we should drop them off at the local arcade. Well, but in the interest of, um, again, putting ourselves in the shoes of monsters, it would be pretty fucked up. It would be pretty fucked up. I guess if your goal is chaos, yeah. let's see how these people interact with people at the at Nathan's the Hot Dogs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, see just, how they take to a Wetzel's pretzel. Yeah. <laughs> just see what happens. God damn, I'm thinking about pretzels now. I grabbed my knife and stabbed with all my strength into the side of his boot. I heard him shriek in surprise and stumble back from the door. I seized my chance. I jumped up, unlocked the door, and ran as fast as I could. He swung at me, his knife slicing into my hand that protected my head as I sprinted. I could feel the pain spreading up my arm, but didn't look up. I leapt down the stairs, ran barefoot through the broken glass out into the yard. I threw open the fence and ran out to the street. Holy shit. That's a lot. We got a little Annie Lennox situation over here. A little stab in there. That's fun. Yeah. Love a little stab. It's a tough day at the office for this murderer. Yeah. Thwarted by a, a common bathroom doorknob and then got stabbed right in the side of a foot. I like that he just apparently didn't plan for there to be doors in this house. <laughs> Are you not like a bean family here? <laughs> I was expecting beans. <laughs> I'm also imagining a knife going into the side of a boot. That seems like a bad stab. Not that there's a good stab out there. There's not a place on my body where I'm like, yeah, stab me, oh, there, yeah, please. Yeah. Stab me, daddy, <laughs> you know, I don't want that. Um, I'm imagining a knife going directly into the side of my foot. I want up, you know what's even worse? The knife going into the boot, but at an angle so that it slices the back of your Achilles. <laughs> and now you're just like, ah! <laughs> yeah. oh! Or now I'm also imagining it going directly, like, into the toes, like, straight into the toes. Oh! And oh! That's also bad. This guy said, I heard him shriek in surprise. I wonder what he shrieked. Do you think he was like, oh, shit! <laughs> Zoinks! Me supposed to stab, not you! He froze when I saw him, mid-fucking stride, like a fucking statue with one leg suspended in air as he stood precariously. I expected him to tip over and fall backwards any second, but he didn't move, not even an inch. It was like he had turned to stone, not all of him, however. He had this strange expression on his face, Almost this cutesy, oops, mommy caught me stealing the cookies again shit. This is a good ass mime. I was about to that's say, a good -ass that's not mime. supernatural. That's just good performance. That's great. Oops, mommy caught me stealing the cookies. <laughs> yeah. You would be a scary mime. I would be a scary mime. I'll dress up as a mime at some point. You should do that for Halloween because your legs should are I so be a mime this year? freakishly long that if you were to do those long strides, what if instead of Halloween, I pick one random day of the year and show up to the office as a mime? I think that's good. I like it better if you just go to like a CVS or something. My concern is that if I did that in public, I would get shot in the head. Like we should person. both be mimes. And then we could do some small and small and tall bits. Our name could be Mime and a Half. That is good. That's not bad, right? That is good. You could go fuck yourself. That's, that's good, good though. It'll be in theater six to the left. I remember, I joked, smiling. Have a nice night, Justin. I wanted to go to a movie theater and make it my cheers. They know me well enough that they call me Mr. Bergara when I walk yeah. in. Yeah. After we shudder Watcher Entertainment. Nice. We'll, we'll start our own movie theater. I think you and I should open up our own movie theater. Emphasis on good popcorn, a lot of rules. No cell phones, 
and I've said this before, the best thing about a cell phone in a dark room is it lights up their stupid face, and that's when we have our robot that slings like ding dongs. And it Sl flies. Slings a ding dong. You know. What's a ding dong? A ding dong, you know, like a small little sausage, you know, like a little little cocktail weenie. <laughs> It slings a ding and dong. It, it slings it at high speed, right into their stupid face, and it's just trained to look at like bright just spots. Say, you know, like a tiny sausage. Everyone Those knows what a, ding every, dong. everyone knows what a ding dong is. Okay. I tried talking to him and shaking him a little, but he stayed frozen still. Eventually, I had to pry his hand off the doorknob and walk him back to bed. Once I had him lying down, though, he went right back to sleep. I did it. I stayed up watching him until dawn. I always hate it when people are like, oh, you gotta be gentle with them. I'd be like is that a splashing thing? water in this guy's face. So your reaction to that is to startle them with ice cold water? Ice cold water? A broom? A broom? <laughs> or turn on a vacuum? That scares my cat sometimes if my cat's being... Actually, that would be kind of funny if you put like the tube on their nose and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just put the tube on their nutsack or something. Now that's... Crazy, you were making fun of me, and now you say put a, a vacuum tube to the nuts. We were already in cartoon territory. You put us there. You mentioned hitting them with a broomstick. I feel like that uh. could cause some serious damage. I don't know if it would cause serious damage. What it would cause is a hilarious noise. <laughs> <laughs> Any attempt to create a page pertaining to smile.jpg is summarily deleted by admins. On its surface, a JPEG provoking said reactions in otherwise healthy individuals is admittedly absurd. The more I researched, however, the more I began to question whether the internet's reluctance to acknowledge its existence was out of disbelief or out of fear. As such, Details of encounters with Smile.jpg have taken on an air of internet legend. I would not trust the internet to band together to not harm people. We, there's a bunch of people that don't even believe the pandemic is real, let alone a fucking JPEG that could kill you. Of course this would kill the human race, It probably. sure would, it sure would. People would people would have it on signs picketing <laughs> places against the governor for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I love Smile Dog. I think he's great. <laughs> His once black nose was all scuffed and he was missing an eye. The other eye must have been replaced at some point because it seemed to be in very good condition compared to the rest of him. What a pleasure to own an object like that. Truly awful. <laughs> I mean, I actually personally think a bear like this uh, has character. I used to have a very uh, strong affection towards items that had been clearly worn. Like I, when I was growing up, I always wanted a beat up car, like a very beat up junkyard van or something like that. I don't like the idea of a, a super old object because it knowing that it's passed through hands of people who have probably lived long, full, sometimes painful maybe lives, and then they've died mm. and gone into the dirt. And here I am yeah. with this teddy bear that, ugh, ugh. As soon as they got out of the driveway, I started blasting music through the Bluetooth speaker in the living room. I took a shower and put on some shorts and my favorite Friday the 13th hoodie, King of the Castle. I was living <laughs> The very definition of living large, taking a shower and putting on some shorts. And also blasting music in your living room like oh, no one's watching. Yeah. When my roommates leave, I'm doing crazy stuff all over, you know? What are you doing? What uh, crazy stuff are you doing? Oh, let me uh, guess, you're popping kernels. I'm popping kernels, that's right, yeah. <sighs> Naked. Sure, um, yeah. just wash I mean, that oil. Oh, I know, I have an oil protector, I have an oil cover on my popper, so. Love to hear that. Maybe making some bacon and eggs or something like that, blasting film soundtracks as loud as I possibly can. I'm imagining you got the, the popcorn popper going over here. You're yeah. also making bacon and eggs for some reason. Buck ass naked, the Dunkirk soundtrack blasting. And I have like a cowboy kind of holster strap on and each uh, holster is a white claw. Uh, 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 to clarify, that's the- <laughs> But still naked. All right, yeah. yeah. Hey, living large. A man at least 80 years old sat at a front desk. His eyes climbed all over me as he told me to take a seat, slowly licking his lip. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not very welcoming. Or really welcoming if you're like lonely, I don't know. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I'm licking my lips thinking of summer. Mm. Mm. Disneyland.
Mm, 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 dog parks. Ooh, dog parks. You're looking at your lips for dog parks? Or just the idea of going like anywhere, concerts. Mm, uh, yeah, you know, dog parks. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Peter's arm on my face woke me up. I immediately saw the silhouette by the window. He was here again. His smile was even wider now. I could easily see how dark and dirty his gums were. My chest throbbed. I was unsure if it was fear or excitement. I can't remember how I fell asleep again, but when I opened my eyes, it was morning. The red man was gone. I enthusiastically told Dr. Fleece the same morning. He listened intently. I told him how the red man got thinner and how impossible it is that his eyes were still intact. He asked me if I was afraid. I remember nodding and then doubting my answer. <laughs> I, God damn it, dude. <laughs> Keep it together, man. <laughs> I gotta say, he really lost some weight, but I don't know how his eyes haven't dissolved yet. I'm worried about his diet. I gotta tell you. Gotta eat more kids. <laughs> this guy's gotta get his kid count up and carbs. Once we were past the carcass, we tried to rediscover our carefree attitude, but it was gone. Jason was still leading with Devin following, me next and Cooper pulling up the rear. Cooper's done for. Cooper in the rear, goodbye Cooper. Yeah, you wanna be in the middle. Middle's good. Actually, that's not true. You want to be in the rear. If you're at the front of the line and you see the bear in front of you, you have to turn around and run, but now there's a bunch of idiots behind you and you have to kind of like, you know, juke around them. Yeah. Whereas if you're in the rear, clear paths to run. Yeah, but also you get snatched, people don't even notice. I think they would. I'm thinking beyond bears here. I'm thinking ghouls. If I'm in the rear, I'm also banking that the enemy will be coming from the front. If the enemy came from the back, then I'm, you're but I guess like, you, you want to take that gamble. because I'm, I'm firmly in the middle. It's a Shane sandwich, baby. Slow night, I asked. Yeah, you're the first person I've seen since I clocked in, probably because there's only one movie playing, Justin explained. I was bummed at the lack of choices, but curious as well. What movie? Justin shrugged. No idea. It doesn't have a title. No poster either. That's weird. That's weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I know. It is weird. No, come on, get out of here. I don't know. I work at the movie theater. What movie's playing? I don't know. Can you just look at the no name title. on the ticket? Does it say no title on the ticket, Justin? No title, no poster. What if he's not human? He's like a robot or part of this like little scheme. Oh, I thought you were going to say alien. Be or an like, alien. No, no, no title. Oh, I'd be like, why are you talking like that? Uh, I am human. You know. Can I get a refund? No. It was almost certainly a fake, I reasoned. And even if it wasn't, I had never been wholly convinced of Smile.jpg's peculiar powers. After all, how could a single image of a dog cause years of nightmares? But if everyone knew the image was a hoax, then why did the legend exist at all? If I downloaded the image, if I looked at it, if Mary turned out to be correct and the creature came to me in my dreams, demanding I spread the word. What would I do? Would I live my life as Mary had, fighting against the urge to spread the picture until I died? Or would I spread the word? And how? Whom would I burden? If this is a real thing, you've seen Smile Dog. Do you think you could would you would show it to someone? Do you think could you think yeah. of one person who would deserve it? I would do one of those things, you know, like when people were protesting Donald Trump and they like projected stuff onto a building. <laughs> Just catch as many people as I could. Oh, so you're going for the mass. Yeah, I want to be a super spreader. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would do? You know sometimes when you're on an airplane and uh, right before it takes off, you uh, turn on your airdrop and you could see some people have their airdrop as shared That's to That's a good idea. It's anonymous, but you still get to hear the, oh, 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 God. That's freaky, man. That's deviant. Thinking I heard something, but the sound would never repeat itself. Either way, I was scared. Was getting in his head. <laughs> Are you scared? <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> uh, this guy's psyching himself out. This sounds like me on any overnight stay at a haunted house. That's true. Yeah, you get yeah. the you sort of get the jimmies. I get the willies for sure. Yeah, you go. You oh, oh, shut up. You always say. He yells at me. Well, sometimes I need to capture the evidence without you going waka 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 waka. You it's invite just like, me. Oh, you do you ever me. shut up? <laughs> <laughs> There's a few times where you've gotten legitimately angry. I don't know if I got nasty. You've I just, gotten nasty. I just want to catch the evidence. He's gotten nasty. And you're there polluting it with the, that dirty hole of yours. 
dirty hole. <laughs> a dirty face hole. Do you speak of my mouth? <laughs> My lungs burned, my legs pulsed with pain, but I didn't stop running until I came back to the cabin. And the nightmare only grew worse. For in the cabin, I found Maya sitting in the living room, surrounded by those damn mannequins sitting on their chairs. They're back? That's what I just read, yeah. What? Surrounded by those damn mannequins God sitting on their chairs. Damn it! How did that happen? At this point, you've now, reality's broken. She's a witch! My real wife is dead and she is now some sort of sorceress. Yeah, this lady's gotta go. I felt like crying. I haven't done it in decades. But at that moment, all I wanted to do was curl up into a ball and start sobbing. Maya stopped fussing over a damaged mannequin and asked me, with the utmost concern, if there was anything wrong with me. <laughs> That's rich. Hey, what's your fucking problem? <laughs> me and the boys want to know. He doesn't seem well. <laughs> I'll tell him, Brian. I'll tell him we're concerned about you. Until that is, a cough lunged out of my throat. <laughs> then another, and another. In seconds, I was having a full fit. Eric stood, startled, and glanced at the clock. He asked if I was all right. I explained to him the situation and assured him it doesn't impact my work. Instead of the doubting look most people wear when I tell them, Eric gave me a big smile and shook his head like a man in elated disbelief at some stroke of good luck. Okay. We've all coughed or had like a coughing fit. I've around. coughed, yeah. You imagine if you just, if someone was just like. Yeah, no one's ever given me that reaction. <laughs> Wait, did he look at the He looked at the watch? clock and smiled. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. It zagged. I thought he was gonna get livid and be like, you're no good, get out of here. Instead he was like, party on. Shut up, my dude. <laughs> or how the elevator beeps pleasantly as it passes each floor, but that it doesn't stop on the second floor. So the silence is extra long between the third and first floors. Remember that last one. I won't ever forget it. Remember that silence. Well, the only thing that's ever happened to me that's scary on an elevator was I was traveling up several floors to a very high location and I knew I had an extended time in an elevator and I had a fart that was imminent and it was a, sure. an elevator full of people and it was, it was painful. I'm imagining that scene in Winter Soldier except in, instead of a, a fight breaking out, it's you just ripping huge ass. Before I did rip ass, I did say, before we begin, does anybody want to get out? And no one got out. So I think that's really on them. They were probably like, oh man, this guy really likes the winter school. Oh, what is that? <laughs> it seems like a weird thing. You would think a mixtape would be, you know, highlights. That's usually what my mixtape is. Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. A Six Flags. Playing in the bounce house. Sure. You know, maybe some bath time with your brother. Bath time with the bro. Yeah. Get those bubbles going. One time my dad forgot that he was recording. Yeah. And he clipped the camera on his waistband. And so for 30 minutes, we just heard. <laughs> that's, that's pretty, that's classic and then dad. He took a shit. It stopped. You're telling an are you scared within an are you I scared. Know. This is a Russian nesting doll of are you scared. That's too much. I'm gripped. Tell me more. We see my dad's sneakers. We kind of hear like the background of oldies music. We're not really sure what's happening. So we all of a sudden hear, hey, you guys got beer here? Yeah, I'll take a beer. You know what? I'll take two beers. You know what? And then. Make it three. <laughs> Four. I'm not driving. And then the camera angle changes and we just see knees. And we just see my dad drinking a beer silently for about 30 to 40 minutes where, I don't know where the rest of the family went, but he snuck off. Ain't that like a dad? That's the most dad story you could possibly have. Wow. Good story, right? That's wonderful. Anyways, that story has a happy ending. I don't think there's a frothy cold one at the end of this story. As I was slipping into bed, relieved that the day was over, a cry from my wife got me out of bed. She rushed into the bedroom with a look of utter horror on her face. Man in the mirror, she screamed. Man, man in the mirror. I had enough sense to realize that she was not talking about the Michael Jackson hit. She was genuinely terrified. <laughs> Be funny if she was. She just comes out and goes, man in the mirror, fucking banger. Thriller, thriller. Honey, it's 3 a.m. I waved my hand in the air, trying to signal someone. As I waved, I looked at the screen and froze yet again. The me on the screen was unmoving. My hand lowered slowly as it dawned on me that this wasn't live. How is that possible? 
let me know if you agree here. If you could go see a movie you love, okay. but they could deep fake you onto one of the characters. Like if you wanted to go see Titanic, but I was like, make me Rose, you know? Let me see what I look like up there. I wouldn't want to see that. That sounds awful. Okay, what about this? What if we could put you in your little Grinch film that you love so much? The Jim Carrey Grinch, but you're the Grinch now. What about then? I still don't think I'd want to see that. I like Jim Carrey as the Grinch. 65 bucks to see me in Titanic up there with Leo. You're a weird guy. Or Avatar. Okay, well, Blue, that, make me blue. Me as an Avatar is pretty Yeah, cool. what if we could both go and be the blues? Okay, you got me in the we'll end. We'll both be blue. Yeah, we'll both be blue, that's good. Mary had been the sysop for a small Chicago-based bulletin board system, or BBS, in 1992 when she first encountered the file. She was one of an estimated 400 people who saw the image when it was posted as a hyperlink on the BBS. Though, she is the only one who has spoken openly about the experience. The rest have remained anonymous or are presumed dead. Welcoming you into a J.J. Abrams mystery box with this story. What's going on here? Wait, What's this guy after? I would argue people he's talking to. I would argue though that that kind of fills me with a little bit more dread because Absolutely. all we're seeing is this person who clearly doesn't want to share details of some story she was supposed to share. Do not misinterpret my commentary as criticism. What, are you trying to fucking Jedi mind trick me? <laughs> Do not <in> misinterpret <laughs> my commentary. <laughs> I'm having a great time. Oh, you're having a great time. You'll finish reading the story. It all started with a cup of water. Every morning, I climb out of bed, march downstairs, fill a tall glass with tap water, and drink it. Every morning. Not to brag, but I'd gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> Sounds like he's bragging. Anytime someone says not to brag, here comes a brag. Not to brag, but I put on my shoes before I go outside. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> you have a morning routine besides waking up and being a D-bag. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna ask an earnest question. And I guess you did. <laughs> Except for one morning, about a year ago, I hiccuped as I started drinking and the water went down the wrong way. I started coughing bad, sputtering, almost choking. I wish there was someone else around for this guy to be like, uh, not to brag, but yeah, I do this every morning. <laughs> a small boy had been found dead at the edge of the woods. His body was covered in scratches. I heard from whispers later on that his eyes had been gouged out, and what remained of his face was contorted, as if his final words had been screams. What were his final words? <laughs> I just, just how long would it take for a cat to kill a human? I feel like after a while you just throw it. It depends how little the boy is. Uh, I don't think a cat could kill a boy though. I'm not gonna lie. That no, I think it could certainly fuck up a boy. It could fuck up a boy. It could fuck up a boy. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like you know how hard it is to gouge out an eyeball. Cats ain't doing that. Those little paws. I think yeah. he's scooping he one. He gets one eye like, tops. Ah. Yeah, that's and right. Sort of, he, oh yeah, he's, then he's got I, a little toy. Or the kid's like, ah, my eye. You know, one eye, I believe. Two eyes. That's the thing, two eyes. Fool me once, Yeah. you know. Fool me twice, I'm blind. <laughs> yeah, you deserve to die at that point. I spent most of that day in bed sobbing. I had read to that boy many times at the library. He always stayed for a little while after reading time, asking me questions about the story, and I adored his inquisitive mind. I was invited to his October 7th funeral, a closed casket affair. <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah. You don't think they put like little silver dollars over his eyes like he was a Viking? <laughs> <laughs> we set up a time for the next morning and as due diligence, I opened Twitter to scout Tanafi's social media presence. Bizarrely, Tanafi didn't have a social media presence to scout. No Twitter, no Instagram, not even a Facebook. Not even a Facebook. And that's like Boomer Town too. That's Boomer City Every Boomer USA. would have usually at least yeah. a Facebook. It's rotten their brains. And it's where they would- uh, <laughs> They're no good anymore. Air out their opinions. <laughs> Remember they used to tell us stuff all the time, like this is how you're supposed to be. <laughs> Don't do that, <laughs> that's wrong. And now they're like, <laughs> what is the world? <laughs> what are facts and reality? <laughs> well, the reaction was rigged. <laughs> Hello? 
Do you need help? What are you looking for? Suddenly, the woods lit up as a bolt of lightning cracked down from the inky clouds, striking 50 yards from me, mere feet from where I'd seen the movement. No! Oh! My dad was struck by lightning. Your dad was struck by lightning? Yeah. What did I pay God for then? <laughs> yeah, nice try. I Venmoed him 20 bucks and he got the wrong bidet. It knocked him out and then he woke up. And then he gave birth to you eventually in a year? No, I was born. Oh, you were born. I wasn't a powder baby. I was about to say what it explained a lot. No, I wasn't a powder baby. You can hold up something metal to me, it will not attach to me. Let's see. Um, <laughs> 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 Mr. Costin, I repeated myself louder. That gets him to stop. He looks at me, blinks, then leans forward. Yes, he whispers, and it feels like a wet tongue sliding down my spine. Oh, all right, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, you know? Yeah, you know, this guy clearly knows what that feels like. A so, wet tongue sliding down the spine. Good for him, he's into some how do you creepy even, stuff. I don't even know how you execute that as the liquor. You gotta sort of like, well, you start lizard either, yourself over them and yeah. all the way <laughs> yeah, down to the ass saying. crack, I guess. Or you could just kind of like work your way up like a big lick, you know? It's a down. Down the down. spine. Oh, then you just start from the opposite way. Yeah. You just like start from the head down. Oh, I see what you're saying. How would you do that? You start with the neck as a little appetizer, then you end with a big old fudge yeah. sundae down yeah. there. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> Anyways. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. The digestive tract of all four could be seen to be working, digesting food. It quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Sounds like a Saturday at the Madej household <laughs> if you ask me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can't be doing it. I'd be impressed. I'd be like, wow, you guys are, you, you nailed it. Holy shit. Uh, it's even worse than we thought. Holy shit, guys. <laughs> holy shit. That's You're even freakier than we thought you would be. You're doing some real freaky stuff out Once here. I, I saw the poop, I was like, holy shit, but now I can see this guy's fucking heart. Do you see that? A dead rabbit strung up, a demonic mask, the knife again, a graveyard, the hooded figure again, a creepy clown, pictures of a family with the eyes scratched out, the hooded figure once more. I had no idea what was happening. My heart was suddenly racing and I got goosebumps. I felt frozen in my seat, stuck watching creepy image after creepy image display itself on the screen. I couldn't look away, couldn't close my eyes, couldn't move. I just watched. Sounds like the Bergara home videos. I know. I was about to say, someone got a hold of Steve Bergara's handy cam. <laughs> <laughs> Your family's sick. Yeah, they are. She hissed and ran past me into the house. My head fell into my hands. I couldn't tell you how long I sat there sobbing. You gotta cut this cat loose. You had his blow its head off? Well, I was just gonna say, lock it outside. Oh. Hey, sure. Yeah, that yeah. too, that too. Just get a broomstick or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, get the fuck out of yeah. here, man. You gotta get rid of this cat. Yeah, you killed somebody. Yeah. I'd like to think you could remove Obi as a grown adult. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought. I'd do more than, I mean, if he ki if Obi killed, unfortunately, I'd be like, give him the chair, you know? <laughs> give him the chair? A little, I'd make a little tiny one. Make a little tiny chair. You'd have to kill him. He done bad. <laughs> the cat's no good. It I'll got, see you in hell. It got pet cemetery. He says in meow voice. <laughs> <laughs> Just little subtitles. I'll, I'll see, see you in hell. hell. <laughs> we had a delightful evening. Despite my very frail appearance, my mind was still quite sharp, as you can tell. I told Ben and his lovely family numerous colorful stories about the old country and the adventures I had while in the full bloom of youth. Of particular interest were my war stories, and Ben was thrilled to know that their guest was that of an intelligent, well-traveled man. If anything, all my years alone at least produced entrancing anecdotes which was nice to see confirmed as I held court with the Cardinals. Whoa, well now this is sweet. I wish this guy were a little more complimentary of himself because he keeps referring to himself as frail. I think one of the fun things about being an old man is the fact that you could repeatedly point out you're an old man, especially to get out of things. Like <laughs> having to take funny, out the trash. Yeah. Ah, can you go get me a beer? I'm just very old and I don't want to get up. Well, you know me, I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Being one of the few people off shift who were not inside the living quarters, I was the first one to notice it. 
a sudden darkening of the water around the rig. For a moment, it seemed like the shadow of something immense was rising from the depths. Something alive. I blinked. No, it wasn't that. No, it was a liquid, climbing upwards like a billowing cloud. Fast, the substance reached the surface and began spreading in a rough circle around the platform. Oil? Oh my god, what if it was like a fucking... Like, like, an, like an oil daddy? Uh, no, oh. more like, a, like I was like a giant octopus or something. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was an oil daddy. What's an oil daddy? Sort of like a big daddy who's made out of oil. Like a big muscular, it looks like a big muscular guy, but he's made out of oil. Like real oily. Okay. There was this one night, however. I woke up to use the bathroom. I was shocked by how cold it was. I looked at myself in the mirror for a bit and then sat on the toilet seat to do my business. That mirror was giving me a bad feeling. I kept imagining that I could see something moving around in the mirror, and yet there was nobody else in the room but me, not even a fly or a bug. It happened at least three times. Then I got up, washed my hands, and just stared into the mirror for a while just to make sure. It eventually made me uneasy, so I hurried back to bed and actually found myself hiding my face with the covers. <laughs> <laughs> Guy took a shit, got real scared, and then was like, Ooh. Here's the thing, I can't really giggle at that because I've done that before in some of the haunted locations we've been in. But then you're risking, I mean, if it's a classic horror setup, you've got the covers over you, and then when you yeah. finally decide to look, then there's the face mirror right man, there. you know? And he's like, I saw you taking a shit. <laughs> He just comes over, whispers in my ear, How about a courtesy fly? <laughs> that was a pretty nuclear dookie you dropped, bro. Now that it's dry, we need someone to search the slide to see if there's any sign of Lily there. Without a second thought, I shot up my hand. It's not hygienic, I don't think, to get in a blood slide. No. I like that this guy is putting together that he was the last one who saw her. I'm imagining the mother being like, What were her last words? I'd be like, well, she was afraid the slide would kill her. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then the last thing I heard was her screaming. A tall, dark-haired guy who lived across the hall and whose name I wished I knew so I could stalk his Instagram. I was lonely, okay? Sounds like my neighbors. What? <laughs> Living next to a tall, handsome guy. <laughs> I don't talk to my neighbors, I don't do I think that. that's, a, uh, that's a parent, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Running water, toilets, and enough dried food to last all five people for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised falsely that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. You only get five items to bring into the chamber for 30 days. What are you bringing? Five well, items. First, top of the list, kazoo. Okay, that would make sense if you were in the chamber by yourself. Let's say I'm in the chamber with you. Kazoo's top of the list. Well, I'm gonna immediately veto the kazoo because I don't okay. wanna hear you Then my this. second item is also a kazoo. So you could take a kazoo from me, I got a backup kazoo. What if I take that kazoo? I confiscate I'm bringing a third kazoo. A third kazoo. You're You've using me... three of your five items on a kazoo. Well, we have to make it at least five days, so I'm busting one of these out every single day. I'm bringing five kazoos. I mean, after 30 days, I, I think I'm gonna perhaps take that kazoo and put it somewhere else. I couldn't imagine what was so awful that a person could shriek like that, and I didn't want to know. I just wanted it to stop. Stop. Stop! I yelled out not even realizing I had done it until the room fell silent seconds after my words. I'd probably walk out if this happened to me. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably walk out too. Maybe the implication is that he's sort of transfixed, you know, it's like hypnotic, almost like a- I see. You know, like- Like the ring. Like the ring. They yeah. love to watch that little lady walk out of the screen, you know? They yeah. could leave at any time or just boop, you know, They'd hit the remote, off, yeah. turn on the fucking remote. Or just leave, yeah, just leave. Just leave. I like the idea of all this going on, but him also being like... <laughs> but like, but scared though, like, ooh. <laughs> he gets a little escape, Colonel's like... <laughs> Most classes have thumbnails of the instructor on their bike. This one, however, was different. It was an extreme close-up of a man's face smiling maniacally straight into the camera. The class was called Bike or Die. 
You know what? I'm signing up for that. I would too, yeah. honestly. Like if I see this, like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I have a Peloton and I don't, and sometimes the happy thumbnails are a bit much. Well, what do you think the person is actually like threatening people in the class? Is he like, you better pick up the case or I'll fucking kill you. I would love that. Sometimes you need that, that kind of motivation. Are they allowed to do that? Yeah, I mean, bike or die with a funny thumbnail, I'm in. With his vocal cords destroyed, he was unable to beg or object to surgery. And he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head yes when someone suggested reluctantly that they tried the surgery without anesthetic and did not react for the entire six hour procedure of replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. <laughs> As a sicko, I like it. <laughs> yeah. That's actually how I order food every time when I go to a restaurant. I don't say what I want. I have the you server go <laughs> down, down the, menu. the menu and when they get to what I want, I go, <laughs> I saw the things that had just been trying to force their way into the room, awkwardly stepping away from the house, almost as if this place was infected. Then I saw the reason, coming out of the woods at the back of the property, all 10 feet of it, a man, no, a giant, thin as a twig, wearing a black coat and a top hat, holding a long walking stick in hand. I'm imagining the Babadook's cousin. Yeah, he had the Baba Duke's lanky cousin. It's like if Baba Duke had a Shane to his Ryan. Yeah. This is the Shane. Yes. This might be you. Uh, hello. I spoke aloud to an empty kitchen. Your breakfast smells great, the voice replied cheerfully. I am the devil, and I'm going to eat your fucking eyes. <laughs> What a very polite voice. Took a turn. Took a turn. He's gonna eat his fucking eyes. I guess honestly, if it's a toss-up between getting something shoved into your eye yeah. and having it sucked out, eh, pop one out. Yeah, but if you suck the eye out, then you have the, the little cord at the back of your oh, eye. Oh, it's like when you it's... get a when you get like a deep, deep booger. Yeah, yeah. And you you blow it and then you it pull it pulls and you can feel it tugging on like your, your frontal lobe. Yeah, a little you can bit feel it just like, connected oh! to your brain stem. Yeah, yeah, it's disgusting. Probably what it feels like to get your eye pulled out by the devil. We'll see. So all right, I'll take a look. Four minutes pass. There were blinds or something covering the window, so I couldn't see the conductor or the driver. The route is a private railway in Shizuoka. I miss trains. Trains are fun. <laughs> fun. <laughs> this is banter. It's fun to ride yeah. a train. Any guesses on what she just saw? <laughs> I guess in my mind, I'm imagining sort of um, a Tom Hanks-ish type director, you know, conductor. We're in Japan. I'm, for some reason, I still have Tom Hanks in my head, I, and I hmm. don't know why. So oh my Paul, God, I know what you're freaking doing, dude. Paul, We're not gonna Paul, talk about Polar Express. Choo choo, the whistle blows. That's the sound of her breathing. I think it'd be kind of cool if we found out this train was uh, conducted by nobody, a ghost train. You now go that's up there, scary. And the levers are just moving on their own. Yeah. Choo choo, more like boo, boo. As I applied, I launched into a coughing fit. My bus mates stared as I struggled to breathe normally. Once the coughing slowed, I muttered, it's not contagious, it's hereditary. No one ever believes me, but I still say it. You can't be looking for jobs on Craigslist. I sold my dresser on Craigslist. I did fear for my life when we met up. I feel like you're just gonna get tricked into kissing a serial killer or something. But wouldn't that mean you're searching for posts in which you're smooching a, a serial killer? I feel like they're like, we got a great job for you, benefits. And then you show up and they're like, the benefit is you get to smooch me. Then you walk out the door. Yeah, but you're already there. <laughs> <laughs> they sent me in for a psych eval and I was discharged a few days later. No one believed my story. Even with the photo of me sleeping, Everyone said there must be a reasonable explanation. Now that's bullshit. That's some bullshit. What reasonable explanation could there possibly be for that photo? You got any drones? <laughs> like sleep piloting? <laughs> I feel bad for this person. I've never- Oh, do ya? Actually, you know what I was just about to say? I've never been in a situation where I've seen something and it was clearly there and someone was telling me I was crazy. And uh, I just realized I have been in that situation several times. When? Oh, you know. You know. It's fun to be the way I am. You son of a bitch. A rattling outside stopped my train of thought. The hairs on my limbs started to rise from anticipation. I stared at the window waiting for... Damn. 
Look, I'm like Ron Burgundy, baby, okay? I'm a, prof I'm a professional. You put you meow on the on page, that. you're gonna get a meow from the Burgmeister. But I, I want a really authentic meow, so please. Here we go, here we go. I'll the try it again. amount of gravitas, but really sell that meow. The hairs on my limbs started to rise from anticipation. I stared at the window, waiting for meow. Nope, no my... good. Once, Fuck. nope, one more. It's gotta be, it's gotta be higher pitched. Higher pitch, higher pitch. I yeah, want it to so sound too. like a I real thought, cat. I'm, I wanna... Look, just give me a second. I'm in my head. I'm in my head. Okay. Okay, let me go one more. The hairs on my limbs started to rise from anticipation. I stared at the window, waiting for... Meow. That was it. That was yes. good. I felt good about that one. That Check was the gate. really good. Check the gate. Good gate. All right, let's move yeah. on. <clears throat> Bored in my apartment, I fantasized about my various neighbors via their Wi-Fi networks. I guessed the guy across the hall was no more Mr. Wi-Fi. I was pretty sure whoever chose Bicord One picked that name in honor of cutting their cable subscription. And who was the genius who came up with the YouTube spigot? Did you enjoy any of those Wi-Fi names, by the way? They stink. Yeah, they're not great. Yeah. Hide your kids, hide your Wi-Fi is someone's in my building. I think that's pretty funny. Hey, that's funny. Mine is whatever they give you when you buy the modem. Why do you hate joy so much? I don't know. Sometimes you just want to bring a little joy into the world and have your neighbors laugh at your Wi-Fi. Stinks. Okay? Well, you know what would be funny? To have one like, my neighbors are fucking lame, dash 5G. <laughs> Yeah, that's great, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Serial killer lives here. Don't knock on door. <laughs> Dash 5G. <laughs> Sir, we can't help you if you don't open the door, she said, on the verge of laughter. Oh, sorry. I don't like that either. No, laughter's never fun. They're fucking having a blast on the yeah. other side of this door. This is like the evil version of Frozen. <laughs> you know? Fucking want to build a snowman, except the snowman is your death. <laughs> <laughs> the landlords had given up on repainting over graffiti years ago, surrendering the West Wall to art pursuits of the 78th Street Crazies. Oh. If you're in a gang called the 78th Street Crazies, that's a lot to live up to. Well, you, gotta be crazy. you gotta be crazy. You gotta be crazy every yeah. single time. You gotta be like, nice to meet ya, and then pour a Diet Coke on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Do you think a 78th Street Crazy member just wants to you know, go to a Starbucks one day and read a book, but no. they can't because they gotta be 78th Street Crazy yeah, all the time? Yeah, he wants to swing a possum around and throw yeah, it yeah. at <laughs> Throw it at a nun. It's tough to always be on. It's I'm always, always on, crazy. man. I'll fit in with them. Look at me. I'm on. Yeah, I mean, you, you, <laughs> you do that until you fall asleep. Like, <laughs> it's just immediate. <laughs> and then I wake up like, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Time to go viral. Oh. <laughs> it was one of the hottest days of summer by far. Unfortunately for me, that meant that Ocean Meadows was absolutely packed from open to close. My summer job as a lifeguard paid well, but sometimes dealing with the bratty kids and their annoying parents just was not worth the dough. What did make it worth it was Savannah Williamson, the coworker I had a crush on. Ooh, Ooh shit, dude. Looks like we got ourselves a regular Met cute, because they already met. Oh. It was already cute. Or a wet cute, as they say around the pool. <laughs> the good old wet cute. <laughs> it's like a meat cute, except wet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Was I not clear? Hey, kid, are you still going down? No answer. Kid? I called again. Nothing. What are the odds that this girl comes out the other end of she that slide? Or she comes down and it's just like just a skeleton? Just... <laughs> Just a skeleton. Just a skeleton in the same like swimsuit. <laughs> Just arms crossed still. <laughs> yeah. I noticed there wasn't any music in the lobby. The only sound was the receptionist's labored breathing. Every couple minutes, I'd steal a glance at him. Every time, he was staring straight at me, smiling horribly and licking his lips. Are you leaving? Yes. You know, it's tough to say. We live in a country where healthcare is tied to your job, which that is, is true. <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, it's not great. This person is so in need of health care that they're staring at this lip licking, yeah, this old pervert. Or, you know, if, if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, maybe he just needs chapstick. He's staring at him and smiling. I don't even like watching people put on chapstick. It disturbs me. Oh, really? It's just weird. Yeah. 
Because sometimes people do that thing where they go all the way around. Oh, that's no good. You ever see someone with one of those, uh, the little round tins? I was at a concert once and there was some dead-eyed teen in front of me who had one of those and she took the cap off and went <laughs> And I remember thinking, that's the most insane thing I've ever seen and yet, I do that now. <laughs> you fucking install chapstick like it's a fucking hubcap? Yeah, I just go, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> when Rachel said, way to go, Margo, welcome to Peloton, I almost burst into tears. Blame. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, man, dude. She just... <laughs> <laughs> you need to make fun of the poor girl because she's so starved for a human connection. Oh, not we're all, look, we're all, we've all had a tough time. You know, not everyone's a Grinch like you that wants to just sit and look at your pristine Funko Pops or whatever it is you do in I your apartment. I don't have Funko Pops except for the one that you bought me from Jurassic World and the only reason I hang on to it even though I hate Funko Pops is because it was a gift from you. That's fair, I, that was a gift. And you liked it, that's why you prominently display it in your place. I threw it out. <laughs> I did. You son of a bitch. <laughs> and honestly, I wondered if maybe I was just struggling with the all too uncommon experience of human interaction. But then Camila, their daughter, stopped smiling at my anecdotes and historical observations. She had ceased listening. Camila was simply staring. Staring with her pinpoint cold, dark eyes as a snake before a strike. <laughs> Could you imagine if like, like, we've both been to a dinner party and sure. let's just say we're both throwing heat, okay? We're bringing it. Everyone's yeah. laughing at our jokes and our stories and it's like, nail it. What if suddenly all the laughs started to slowly diminish to more like, ha ha ha, and then eventually, <laughs> and then to, <laughs> and then to, get the fuck out of there, man. <laughs> Roll your old ass out the front door and start screaming. Now, I cannot stress this enough. There was nothing, absolutely nothing weird about this elevator. It wasn't even sketchy looking like some are. You know, the kind with the flickering lights or the weird groaning sound when you step on, or the doors that make uncomfortable screeching noises when they slide closed. Not this one. It was pretty fucking solid by all accounts. <laughs> I like the way that this uh, narrator describes things. Very just uh, colloquial. Pretty fucking solid lift here. This thing yeah. gets you to where you need to go. I like when people describe things as solid and even more when they add the fucking in there. I don't know, it just, it tickles me. <laughs> I ran as hard as I could for as long as I could, trying to ignore the growing whispers in my ears. Not again, the woman's voice said. Not ever again. How is she doing that? I guess she's a forest witch, so she's like Magic. whispering. It'd be funnier if she said things that were non-threatening, you know, like, yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> How the hell did she pull that off? I chuckled internally as I tried to decipher what was scribbled on the front of the package. Chuckled internally? Yeah, I think that's, you never laughed inside your mind where you're just like. Let me try. I would assume I you, smi it. you smile though, you would smile. You do this, how about this, like a subtle one, like an HBO smile, like this. You're the victim, that's a fun twist. You're the victim. I don't like, I... <laughs> how did I not see that coming? Of course they're gonna attach it. Well, I didn't realize we were reading the article that he was writing. It makes sense because it includes the emails and like the first interaction and all that stuff. But okay. I did know that we were on a one way train to Smile Dog Town. Yeah, not very scary. Well, I mean well, the picture. Yeah, when it's preceded by <laughs> Of course it's oh, not as scary. scary. Mm, not scary. It's crazy that they're not gonna know what we're talking about. I know. Fucking. <laughs> Why do I even keep falling for it? I'm like fucking uh, uh, Charlie Brown when Lucy pulls the football away from him. Like it's like every single time it delivers. It's gonna be my new thing. I'm gonna trick I hope you into it seeing it all the what, time. You're gonna fucking buy a mask, like a shirt, maybe some mugs. Yeah. I've lived there for more than a year before my three month visit to my parents and had a sense of belonging in the place which I think made me oblivious to things that were obvious to Dave such as a layer of undisturbed dust across the entire living room and kitchen floor, except for a thin track from the front door to the hallway leading to the back of the trailer. Whispering to me, Dave says, nothing in here has been used for a long time. And looking around, I realize he's right. The TV, the computer, the couch and chairs, the dining room table with its rotten food. John hadn't so much as laid a hand on any of it for a month, possibly longer. 
the long uh, track made me think Dave was going to be like, I think that dude's a slug. You know, like he <laughs> turned into some... I guess I was imagining like a slime trail. Yeah, like he just ekes off into the... into the. He goes, you guys can crash out here. <laughs> just, just I think your friend's a slug, dude. Welcome back to Peloton, Margo. Let's do some biking. After only a few minutes, the instructor was clearly very winded. Sounds like me doing a Peloton class. <laughs> Could you imagine if like Peloton went on some kind of like marketing scheme to make themselves more like relatable and like they did just have like a normal guy like, all right. Oh my God, this is hard. Oh shit, dude, let's turn this resistance down a lot because my legs are burning. In fact, you know what? Let's just get off the bike, dude. I don't even want to do this anymore. Let's take a little Coca-Cola break. <laughs> Frankly, this sounds like a good class. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm following this instructor and he's like having a hard time, I'm thinking like, hey, maybe I'm not such a piece of shit. <laughs> it's just a guy like sitting on his bike, not even moving, being yeah. like, did anyone understand the final season of Lost? <laughs> I whimpered as I recognized the coppery taste. It is so weird that blood tastes like that. Yeah, man. I've often heard it described as tastes like pennies, sure. which I always thought was weird because that means you're sticking pennies in your mouth. You never stuck a penny in your mouth? As a kid, you never like got a penny in your mouth? No, no. I mean, why? I don't go out of my way to eat pennies, but I've definitely, even if, even if you haven't tasted pennies, if you have a penny, I don't have a lot of pennies anymore. I want to find some more pennies. They're so hard to spend. Nobody wants your pennies. I'll wait till you circle back around. So, <laughs> All right, well, let me tell you something. Pennies smell like blood tastes. <laughs> and they taste like blood tastes. And they probably taste like blood smells. Crazier things have happened. I forgot about the incident and moved on with my life. But then the cup trail incident occurred. What the hell could the cup trail incident the be? The cup trail. It's not a very chilling name. No, I get, it must have been a terrifying event, but cup trail incident doesn't exactly not. strike fear into my yeah. little heart. My, my, you know, I, I measure- What is your, what? I measure my fear by how tight the butthole oh. clenches. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah your sphincter. Do this. No, okay. Yeah, okay. So how many? Okay. How much you dilated by the by the fucking cup trail incident? Here. I'm showing you. So, oh, I see. You don't think it's scary? Not at scary. All. Oh. Cup trail? Come up with something better in ten seconds. Um, it's like, kind of hard because you don't have any details. The goblets of fear. That's oh. better. That's already better. Yeah, it's already better. He did that in ten seconds, baby. That's Shane Madey, dude. Yeah. That's Shane Madey. Yeah, put him on the timer and he'll have your fucking sphincter looking pristino, baby. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I'll scare you that much. Yeah, you could crunch a walnut when that That's bad boy. right. Just don't eat it. He said a good social life was important at Tanafi. I said I couldn't agree more. It's nice to hear a company interviewing you and saying like work-life balance is a, is a big thing here. That's true. I think that's, uh, you know, admirable. Red flag though. Eric emailed him after hours. Not practicing what they preach. Though at Watcher, I would say that some of us don't always uh, practice healthy work-life balance. Uh, not me, uh, 6 p.m., I'm done. You know that about That's true, that is true. <laughs> he's, he's pretty good at that. I, I, I was talking about me, I was, that, that's me. I'm... Yeah, you're sick. Amber began to cry, and her cries eventually becoming pleas as she begged for help, her life, her mother, and my intervention. Uh, five, five more minutes, just five more minutes, I muttered mentally cursing the timer which displayed the estimated arrival time of the dispatched officers. I prayed it would be soon enough. It's outside the room, she whispered, her voice one of utter panic, before breaking into a quiet sob. I silently swore under my breath. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> Shit. It's outside my room. And he's like, oh, balls. Okay, um, here's what you gotta do. <laughs> I turned and watched in horror as the huge metal structure holding up the drill pipe began to bend, inwards and downwards, like an aluminum can being crumpled from the top, as if something deep within the ocean crust was pulling at the drill pipe from the bottom, causing the derrick to give way under pressure. Another metallic groan, followed by shouts of fear and panic. It sounds like we're dealing with some kind of big sea creature here, because it's pulling down the derrick. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's pulling down the derrick. Unless that's the devil down there. Odds on devil, what, like 25%? Yeah. You're just the devil walking through hell, like, what the fuck's this? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? Does huh? it turn on a light somewhere? Or? It seems to be attached to something. <laughs> What's that noise? It changed to a trailer after a few seconds, and I relaxed into my seat. 
I hadn't missed any of the movie, but I wish I had. The trailer was dull. It was some coming of age teen girl movie that I hoped Rachel wouldn't want to see in the future. I watched the preview scenes, just wanting to hurry up and get to the movie. The girl was trying on dresses, arguing with her mom, standing up to her bully. Typical cliche things. This guy sounds rude. Your daughter's gonna wanna see movies about girls. He doesn't like coming it's of like, age movies unless bitch, they're about Your daughter's gonna wanna see this one. <laughs> oh, she's gonna wanna see herself represented on screen? <laughs> what a fucking needy little girl. Her face was carved with disdain. A great break of a nose set above a thin, lipless mouth. Wiry gray hair pulled back into a tight bun, revealing gaunt cheekbones like chiseled marble, and coal black eyes smoldering with anger. Who could have said that this was a helpless old lady in desperate need of a live-in caregiver? What is, why are we being so cruel to this woman? <laughs> Just open this story by talking mad shit about this old lady. Her eyes are black like coal. She passed her prime 30 years ago. <laughs> she wasn't even sexy. And when was the last time you did this hike? Maybe he could hear the skepticism in my voice. 15 years ago-ish, I don't remember. It's kind of a brutal hike, but it's worth it. When we get to the top, the trees go all the way to the horizon. You can watch the wind travel across the tops. It feels like the forest is breathing. Actually hearing that sentence now, I realize that the hiking subreddit is probably just as insufferable as a crypto subreddit. It's always people being like, uh, yeah, I guess my morning view isn't too bad. And it's a video of someone <laughs> you know. opening their tent door and looking or out at Yellowstone. Just pictures of like the huh. same kind of woodsy horizon going, oh, today's office. You know. Guess I'll camp here for the night. How'd I do, Reddit? <laughs> <laughs> I held out my pinky and she offered her own, intertwining it with mine. After I let go, she did too. Her body fell into the darkness of the whirlwind. This may be a nasty thought, but I was thinking it'd be funny if they gave her the go ahead and she starts to go down the tube and then just right as she pulls out, just to say, you're gonna die. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So she hears that. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great, you should have been a lifeguard. I should have, that's what I'm saying. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off and an artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. That's like a monkey. They're doing monkey stuff. I just, the brutal image of someone ripping my testicles off and then showing them to me in my intent. It doesn't intent. seem just, fun. Just imagine the person being like, hey, uh, can you hold my intestines for a second? <laughs> You'd be like, yeah. And they'd be like, ah! <laughs> You'd be like ah, come on, man. Her big brown eyes, once filled with sparkle and nervousness from anticipation, were now completely devoid of life. Dull, bloodshot, bored. I feel like if I were to die at the hands of a slide monster, the last thing my eyes would look like is boars. Yeah, it's, it's fairly exciting. Not in a positive sense, no, it's no. just, wow, this is exciting. I'm being mutilated by a slide monster. More sort of a, right? Yeah, dude. That's the look of a kid who realizes he's never going to Disneyland again. <laughs> After some time, the noises stopped. I started counting slowly. When I reached 1,000, I decided it was safe enough to climb down and call the police. Whew, man, this is why we gotta get a chip implanted in our head. I think it'd be good for I everybody. Just, we could just call people from, like, I could just blink twice and now I'm calling my grandma. That's the thing, everyone is always like, oh, the government's gonna put chips in you and then what? I'd be like, chip me up, bro. Yeah, and then I'm walking out of my house hands-free, using my forehead as Apple Pay, it's great. Yeah, I'm just imagining everyone at the store doing Apple Pay and then you just dunking your head. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, let me purchase these sun chips. <laughs> <laughs> and I had recently tried to start knitting. I struggled with the monotony of my days, and most days I felt stagnant, like I was waiting for something exciting to happen, but I just kept telling myself that I liked my quiet little life. Most days, I could even start to believe it. Looking back at it now, I wish things had stayed quiet. You know, it's a good cure for monotony, knitting. <laughs> yeah, that'll add some spice Doing to my life. Doing the same thing for six hours. <laughs> yeah. To make a little scarf after four <laughs> oh, months. Oh man, six hours of hard work and now I have a sock. Yeah. <laughs> I'd go to the supermarket and talk to a stranger. Yeah, they, strangers love that. What you buying? I see you got some butter. Want some ice cream? <laughs> 
I thought about trying to climb through the window, but there would be nothing to break my fall but the hard driveway one story below. My racing mind was snapped back to reality by the sound of wood creaking loudly as the pizza man climbed up the stairs. <laughs> I got it's not very scary to say as the pizza man climbs the yeah, stairs. Yeah, I know. Like if, if I had like a creepy call and I was like, who, what's your name? Why are you doing this? And he goes, I'm the pizza man. <laughs> I'd be like, cool. I know you're about to murder me. Can we workshop this a little bit? I don't want it in the papers that I got killed by the pizza man. Full admission here. I forgot about the pizza man. When you me said too. it was the pizza man, I was like, oh yeah, that guy. The guy from the first act. Every single time. Eric started sleeping on the couch around that same time, claiming that the way I was talking in my sleep was keeping him up. I pressed him for further details, now feeling solidly unnerved, and he just said it was gibberish. Like gibberish, like... Yeah. Well, I don't think she's sleeping and scatting at the same time. She wasn't there with like a fedora on. And then the cat on the uh, on the cymbals. Teddy bear comes in with the horn. Take it away, Charles. And Charlie on the axe. The emotional toll of the situation was large, but I was trying my best to make it through each day. I just kept telling myself that given time, Elsie would go back to being her old self, that this incident had just shaken her up. When a cat goes bad, I guess any animal, when any animal goes bad, uh, that's a bummer. It is. They get, uh, I guess some could get uh, rabies or... Yeah, or just mentally deteriorate. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Bye. Agreed. Bummer. <laughs> All right. Are you scared? <laughs> Are you scared, scared of, of the your... inevitable creep of time <laughs> that will destroy us all? Are you scared of your best friend losing its mind in front of you and dying? Alleged victims offered the same description of the photo. A dog-like creature, sometimes described as looking like a Siberian husky, illuminated by the flash of the camera, sits in a dim room. Near the left side of the frame, a human hand extends from the darkness. The hand is empty, usually described as beckoning. The beast's muzzle is reportedly split in a wide grin, revealing two rows of very white, very straight, very sharp, very human-looking teeth. That sounds funny. Sounds awful. I've seen a video where a man drops his dentures and his dog puts them in his mouth. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I want you to see this dog with the dentures in its mouth. <laughs> oh God, actually, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. At this point, the voice, Pedro, I guess was singing. Show tunes. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't mind a little person in my head singing show tunes all day. That's pretty much what my brain does anyway. So yeah. it's, you know, you kind be, of business as usual. You get a little me. harmony going. I mean, everyone's singing voice always sounds better in their head than it does in reality. I mean, I, I disagree. For, I mean, not all, not everybody. As, as a new, you think you have a lovely singing voice? Yeah, I do. I'll own that. Oh, that was not an invitation, but go ahead and take it. Ave <laughs> I was gonna say that would be copyright, but I don't think they'll even come after you for how poorly that's been sung. <laughs> You're nasty, come on, finish <laughs> the story. I sighed and set down the book and coffee, stretched and walked to the door. There was a large man on the other side, dressed in stained overalls and a flannel shirt. This does sound like you. <laughs> it really does, honestly. <laughs> Hi there. You'd be scary in overalls, I think. That one day you they came to work a, in they... a jumpsuit, you did look like Michael Myers. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It was really scary. I gotta bring that back. <laughs> Please don't. A show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it until the end of the night. The Hat Man. It is not a story about you. I have a lot of hats. I would love more hats if there's a hat company out there that would like to sponsor me. I could use more hats. Why are you doing that with your mouth? T talking?
Should we move on to the story? I'd love to hear it. So far, not very scary. I called 110 and tried my absolute best to explain the situation, but they thought it was all a joke and got angry at me. So I got scared and apologized inside the tunnel now. That sounds like me. You immediately have any kind of opposition and you're like, my bad. I'm sorry, <laughs> hi, yeah. Uh, so I think I'm maybe trapped in hell. It, could you sit? Uh, you're, you're right, where? I'm sorry. Where are you? Where? I think I'm in hell. Okay, any more information? It's a train station okay, that might this be This is hell? a serious line. We don't take prank calls lightly here, I'm sir. sorry, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You sound like a little baby. Ooh. You sound like a little baby boy. Do you forgive me, daddy? <laughs> Flipping on the lights to my bedroom, I ended up facing down the impossible. Charles was sitting smack in the middle of my bed. His head turned slightly so his one good eye was aimed directly at my face. I was sure I started screaming at that point. <laughs> I mean, that's scary. I'm just imagining someone opening a door and seeing a teddy bear on a bed and going, Aah! I finally settled in and focused on the large screen, which had been playing a Pepsi commercial when I walked in. Pepsi! Oh no, we can't Bring get Bring the Pepsi no. alarm! <laughs> Heart pounding, I reached for the radio at my belt to fire off a warning. I didn't get the chance to do that because the very next moment, the Derek let out a horrible groan. Oh. <laughs> Just, oh. If this was in the Pixar Cars universe. Yeah. Oh God, can you imagine that guy with Cars eyes being like, Oh. <laughs> just been Googly. Well, that looked like the Derek had something else happening to it. I was in the kitchen scrubbing the dishes clean. Surly Sarah had proven to be a picky eater, exactly as I had expected. It had taken me almost half an hour to get her to tell me what she wished to eat. I think when all else fails, you have some beans. Or some, um, you know what I've been doing a lot lately? What? Sardines. Ugh. Canned sardines, really nice in a pinch. Like a cartoon cat? Yeah, you can eat the bones. They're very fragile and chewy. They, 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 they're really good. <laughs> Jason's the annoying one, the fourth member of our little hiking expedition. Cooper was the other annoying one. They met Devin on Reddit talking about boner coin or whatever the latest crypto scam was that wasn't like the others until it ended up just like the others. Oh boy, we're in trouble. Uh, it looks like they're all just, uh, they're, they love hiking. They are, they're on one of those like subreddits that's like very hyper specific. Yeah, I got a I, few you, of those. And you look like a guy who has a few I of those. I just got on the NATO, the tornado subreddit. <laughs> you know about my new tornado For a phase. second there, I thought you were talking about NATO subreddit, like you're just a big fan of No, no, the, I'm talking the, about the, the twisters. Treaty. I'm talking about God's ropes, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what do you talk about on tornado subreddit? Just tornadoes. You're chiming in on these like regularly? I'm chiming, yeah. And that and the popcorn subreddit. Dad's a fucking rat. He turned his back on his partner no, in crime? No, I don't think that's added anything. I think it's just like, they're gonna come murder this kid. But why would they murder him after? Well, the father's going over, I believe, to, as the children say, a bit of a vibe check. <laughs> 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 They're like, get over there, see if he's a little, uh, little pale in the face. Or someone else figured out what they had done somehow. Oh, the, and then sent it to him. And they were like, this son needs to know. But then how would they know that was on the tape? Because all he said was got the birthday present. Well, I would think that if in your possession of your home videos, you had videos of you brutally murdering. Yeah, that's true. You'd, you'd probably, probably be like, ooh. Well, counterpoint, you would also probably label that as murdering 87. <laughs> Jeffy's third birthday. His hair was overgrown and greasy, and his body odor was terrible. His smell is the first thing that made me think there was something really off about the situation. It was almost the sickly sweet smell of something dead, but not quite. I've never smelled anything exactly like it before or since. The way he's describing his friend, this, just, this sounds like somebody that's just been in quarantine for a while. Yeah, sounds I mean, like all it sounds like me currently. Right now, my skin has an unhealthy, waxy look to it. Yeah, yeah. Hair overgrown. I this mean, guy, look at, yeah, look at this guy. He looks like look at homeless right Ringo Starr. You guys want to play some D&D? &D? <laughs> Maybe a quick one-shot piece of love. You guys down for one shot? One shot? Yeah, let's do a sesh. More corpses littered the area. 
but there were some who were still alive. One who knelt and stared at the sky, mouth open, eyes vacant. One who was curled up like a baby, sobbing hysterically. Sounds like me and you at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> just you checking shit out in the sky, just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And me just curled up like a little baby, you know? There's screaming coming from hell and there's a blood geyser in front of you, so it's like. It's a real scene, man. Holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what you would say to me. Check that shit Check out. Check that shit out. Oh. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> cry, cry, like curled up like a little baby. One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. I like the idea of him uh, like only doing it when she's looking though, like if another doctor comes in, he's like. <laughs> what if he was flirting? Maybe. <laughs> what if he like just this thought she was This turn cute? into a love story? Yeah, this is a meet cute. You're home early, did something happen? She pressed further, but I didn't answer. How could I explain that? She'd think I was crazy. Anyone would. I'd think I was if I hadn't witnessed it myself. I didn't like the movie. I told her after. <laughs> movie was me. What movie was me. Judging every step with a careful foot. He was at the basement door, scratching at the wood. Every scrape was slow and deliberate, and I heard his panting coming in fitful bursts, a low growl riding the edge of his breath. Good boy bear sounds like bad boy bear. Well, I mean like, you know. He's being a bad boy. He might sense an intruder. That's a dog's job. That's a dog's job. I like that dogs have an instinct to protect their owners, but if like someone broke in and they killed my dog because it tried to protect me, I'd feel pretty bad about that the next day. Yeah. I almost would like want to train my dog to be more like a cat. So. Teach it to just like hide. Yeah. And then maybe text me like, hey dude, someone's in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks dog. <laughs> Thanks dog, I'll grab my katana. <laughs> <laughs> and cut someone's fucking head off. <laughs> Oh, my dog texted me. <laughs> drip, 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 drip. It came faster now. I carefully rounded the last corner before the slide ran into the pool. And then I saw her. Yes! Oh, God. I'm excited. I do want to I'm know very curious. what the state of her is. Yeah. I hope it's sort of a human origami situation. Jesus. I want her to be folded up. That's disgusting. You know? What shape? Um. Like a duck? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Well, here we go. Still restrained to a bed as the remaining members of the medical and research team fled the room. What are you? He screamed at the man strapped to the table. I must know. The subject smiled. What's he gonna say? Wait, I'm gonna put my money on it. I, I, I could see ahead, so I do know what Okay, he says. here's my guess. I am God. That's pretty good. Is it close? Uh, no, oh. no, no, no. What would you say? What would I say? This is CNN. <laughs> <laughs> he turned to Aaron. Afraid your girlfriend only got clip-in shoes for herself. Guess it's just for her. I live across the hall. We're not dating. Aaron blurted a little too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> nah, man, wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole, bro, but. Have at her. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, just put the bike right there, or I don't know, or not, I don't really give a shit, don't live here, so. Don't even know her name. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm gonna go back and watch fucking YouTube, so. <laughs> Gotta crank that spigot, you know what yeah, I'm talking you know about? Yeah, I'm saying, then I'm gonna fire up that Xbox Live. <laughs> Have you done this before, by the way? Have you ever like woke up in the middle of the night, thought you heard something, and you just kind of, the only way you can describe it is you're like. It's happened to me a few times, and then I just go back to sleep. But how long do you sit in that like pause before you think it was nothing, <clears throat> go back to sleep? I usually wait about like a minute. Like nothing's gonna get me out of bed, really. There's never been like a big bump or something, and Sarah was like, go check that out. No, I'd always just assume it's Obi getting up to nighttime <laughs> mischief. That cat's gonna get you killed. Yeah, maybe. You'll definitely. Yeah, because I'll be like, ah, it's eh, just Obi. It's just Obi. And someone walks in holding Obi. Holy shit. Just gutted. <laughs> Holy fuck. And a big knife.